Welcome friends. Welcome to the World Storytelling Cafe. My name is Kath Little and I'm telling stories and singing songs to you today from my house in Cardiff in South Wales. Just here. And we're in midsummer and I've got some midsummer dreaming stories for you today and some songs too. So let's begin. Amser might and all. Once upon a time there was a queen and her name was Ellen and she lived in this land a long time ago. The story says she wore a crown of gold studded with pearls and rubies. She sat on a golden throne and wore a dress of white and gold brocade. And it was as easy to look at the sun at midsummer noon as it was to look at Ellen, for she shone. She is known as Ellen Llwydog, Ellen of the hosts, Ellen of the waves, Ellen of the dream paths, for she could send out dreams. And once she sent a dream all the way across the sea to Rome, to the emperor of Rome, Maxen Wledig. Now Maxen Wledig was out hunting one day in midsummer and he got too hot and too tired, so he decided to rest beside a stream. His men brought him a shield to pillow his head, and they made a canopy of shields hanging on all their spears to guard him from the hot rays of the sun. And there, he slept. Kavod Maxen Reithwit. He had a dream. In the dream, he followed the stream till he came to a mountain. In the dream, he climbed the mountain and on the other side, he followed the plain, a wide river now, all the way down to the sea, till he came to a beautiful city with rainbow colored towers. And in the harbor of the city, a magnificent ship of silver and gold. And in the dream, he boarded the ship and sailed across the sea to a lovely green island. And in the dream, he crossed the island to the west until he came to a castle. The doors of the castle were open. And the walls of the castle were made of crystal and the roof of the castle was shining gold. And in the castle, he saw two young men playing with boys, chess. And an old man carving pieces of gold. And there on a golden throne, shining like the midsummer sun, was a queen. And she stood to greet him, and she invited him to sit next to her on the throne. And she reached out to kiss him. And then, well, the shields came clattering to the floor, the dog started to bark, and Maxim woke up. He woke up, and he longed to dream again. Cassie Vraithwit, I want to dream again. Back at Rome, he sent out messengers all around the world to find their little island of his dreams, to find the queen of his dreams. But after a year, the messengers came back no wiser than they had been on the first day they set out. And then one of his advisors said, go to the stream where you first had the dream. So he did. And he sent the messengers from there. And they followed the little stream till they came to the foot of a mountain. And the messengers, 13 there were, said to themselves, this must be the mountain that Maxen saw in his dream. And they climbed up the mountain and down the other side and they found a fair plain and followed a wide river to a city. And the messengers said to one another, this must be the city that Maxen saw in his dream. And there in the city harbour, a magnificent ship of silver and gold and the messengers said to themselves, "The mass long, a well of Maxen and a Wraithwit. And they climbed aboard the ship and sailed over the sea until they came to a fair green island, a small island. And the messengers said to one another, "The Maranis, a well of Maxen and a Wraithwit. They travelled west across the land till they came to a mighty fort. And the messengers said to one another, Zemargair, a well of Maxen, and a Wraithwit. 
and the walls were made of crystal and the roof of gold. And they met two men in black silk playing with boy, and an old man carving pieces for the game out of gold. And there on a shining throne, too bright to look at, was the queen herself, Ellen. A golden crown studded with pearls and rubies, a dress of white and gold brigade. And the messengers bowed low and said, Greetings, Empress of Rome. Our Emperor loves you and wishes you to come to Rome with us now. But Ellen the Queen said, If your Emperor loves me, tell him to come and find me himself. So back they went, their messengers, over the lovely island, across the sea, through and over the plain, up the highest mountain and down the other side until they came back to Rome and gave their message. And as soon as he was ready, Maxen travelled with them, that same journey, that same dream path, till he came to the mountains. And he recognised the path of his dreams over the plain and the city of rainbow-coloured towers. And he travelled on that silver and gold ship over the sea. Oiliav dros y môr, nes carai dat yr ynys, yr ynys hardaf yn yr holl fyd, the most beautiful small island in the world, ynys Prydain, the island of Britain. He crossed to the west till he came to the Caer, and the doors were open, and the walls miriai o cystal gwerthfawr, and the roof thaw or ire. And there were the sons of Ada, the old man carving golden chess pieces, and the sons Kenan and Gadeon playing with boy. And there on a golden throne was the Queen Ellen. It was more difficult to look at her than it would be to look at the sun at noon on midsummer. Disclare your he. Ellen stood to greet the emperor, Chrysa, and invited him to sit on her golden throne with her. And she reached over and kissed him. And he did not wake up, for this was no longer a dream. That night, Ellen shared her bed with the Emperor of Rome. And the next morning she asked for her gifts in return. She asked for three castles to be built in the island, in the north, the west and the south, and for roads to be made leading and connecting them and all her people. And those things were done by Max and Mladic. The castle in the north, Carnarvon. In the west, Carmarthen, in the south, Caelian, and the roads that connected them all. For once upon a time, Ellen, Ellen, the shining one, sent out a dream to the Emperor Maxen. And Maxen, filled with the dream, followed the dream and made his dream come true. Now we know at midsummer that strange things happen. And there is some folklore about a flower that only blooms at midsummer, at midnight. And this is a local story from Mane the Garth, which is a mountain just outside Cardiff. So one midsummer night, a girl, Megan, was walking over the Garth mountain. She was hurrying a bit because she'd been at her auntie's and they'd been storytelling and singing and she hadn't wanted to leave but now it was late and she was worried about her mother and sister and how they would be worried about her. So she was rushing a bit when she came to the top of the gar and she saw a flower, a red, red flower. She had never seen this flower before and it was blooming at night, which was very strange. 
must be some sort of moon and sunflower. And she walked towards it, so bright was it. And she reached out to pick it and take it home for her mother. But as she reached out her hand, she heard laughing. There was no one there. So she reached out her hand again, but then there was this strange laughter. Now when she reached out to touch the flower, it burst like a little candle flame and all the little seeds of the flower burst onto the air like fireworks and the seeds of the flower scattered everywhere and some of those magic seeds fell into Megan's pocket but she had no idea they had. She continued her journey home but before long, she was lost, which was very strange because she knew that mountain so well. and She'd lived all her life in the shadow of the mountain and now she was lost. She couldn't believe it. There was a hawthorn twisting where the oak should be. The path led down when it should lead up. She walked past briars that reached out and grabbed her clothes. She walked through muddy streams. She went round and round in circles and it was just before dawn when she actually got home. So exhausted was she, she couldn't even lift her feet to go upstairs to bed. So she slumped in the chair by the fire and fell fast asleep. Next morning, her mother and sister came down and walked right past her without speaking. Well, Megan thought they must be cross with her for being late the night before. Bessie bored, she said. Don't be like that. I lost track of time. And she was telling this great story. Her mother and sister looked at her and then they both screamed. And her sister ran out the house. Bessie bored. And Megan was wrong. Her mother stared at the place where her daughter's voice was coming from but saw nothing. Now luckily at that time, just at that moment, Megan took off the coat, which had the pocket, which had the little seeds in it. And as she did so, she appeared and her mother could see her. When her sister came in with the neighbours, Megan was sitting with her mum, having a cup of tea and telling her all about the flower and the strange laughter on the monies. Of course, she had to start all from the beginning as soon as the neighbours came in. And when he heard it, it was Uncle Jim from next door who said, that's the fern seed. The fern blossoms at midnight, at midsummer, and its seeds, its seeds will make you, make you walk invisible and will make you lose your way. The fern seed. Well, when Megan's mother heard that, she said, throw those seeds into the fire. I'm not having you lost again. So Megan did. Well, at least she said she did. She kept a few of those little red seeds safe and secret just in case she she finds a time when it might be useful to be invisible. And that's the story of the fern seed and here's a song of the love seed. I sow my seeds of love it was all in the spring. Now there's April, there's May, and there's likewise June. And the small birds, they do sing. And the small birds, they do sing. A garden well perfume, flowers of every sort. Now I had not the chance for to choose for myself. No, not the flowers I love the best, not the flowers I love the best. 
gardener standing by. I asked him to choose for me, now he's chosen me, the lily, the violet and the pink, ah, but I did refuse all three, ah, but I did refuse all three. The lily won't do for me, because it do fade so soon. The lilac and the pink I now have overlooked, and I vowed I would wait till June, and I vowed I would wait till June. June brings forth the red rosebud, and that is the flower for me. I oftentimes snatched at the red rosebud, so I gain at the willow tree, so I gain at the willow tree. The willow tree it will twist, the willow tree it will twine. I wish I was in my true love's arms, that once held this heart of mine, that once held this heart of mine. Come all you young maidens that have a mind to chipper or to change. While the grass that you lately have trodden underfoot, and in time it will rise again, and in time it will rise again. Once upon a time, a boy was up on Lantrisant Mountain. He was minding his father's sheep. It was midsummer and the sun was hot. So hot he'd found shelter by a mossy boulder on the mountain under the shadow of a yellow gorse. And there he watched the sheep and dozed and daydreamed a bit. The air was heavy with the scent of the gorse and his eyelids heavy. When there came the scent of another flower, rich and sweet and strange. And then he heard singing, strange, sad music on the mountain. He opened his wide eyes wide. There was a girl of about his age, not very far from where he sat singing and dancing. Her arms and legs were bare and they were as brown as the earth and her long black hair as black as a crow's wing hung loose and heavy down her back. She wore her dress white as the hawthorn blossom and in her hand she carried roses, wild white roses edged with red. And as she sang and as she danced on the mountain, she scattered the roses and the petals, making a pattern, a spiralling pattern around her. The boy stood up, enchanted by the song, drawn forward by the singer. And the girl disappeared. He came to the pattern of roses on the ground. The scent was so exquisite. He bent down and picked up one of the flowers, buried his nose in the soft velvety petal. He wanted the flower for himself. He held it tight in his hand and turned back. And then he turned again, looked on the ground and saw 
that he'd left a gap in the pattern and he'd spoiled it. Sadly, he bent down and placed the rose where he found it. And when he stood, there she was, the girl again. She smiled at him and it was a sad, sad, sweet smile. The eyes were the colour of sloes, the berries of the blackthorn in the autumn. She reached out her arms towards him, three white roses tipped with red. She offered him and he took the flowers in his hands and then she was gone. He kept those three roses safe all day, ran down to the stream and wrapped them in leaves and kept them in the shadow of the boulder and the gorse and carried them precious, safe to his heart, all the way home that night. He found a jam jar and put them in water next to his bed and his little room was filled with the, scent, the sweet and rich scent of roses. And when he put his head on his pillow, he dreamt of the girl on the mountain and her singing filled his dreams. When he woke the next morning, the roses had gone. At the bottom of the jam jar, something shone and glittered. He fished out three silver coins, more money than he'd ever seen in his life. The silver was cold and heavy in his hand. And though it was a lot of money he held now, he knew in his heart, he'd rather have the roses. I fell asleep beside a stream And there I had the strangest dream For down in Brennan's glen there grows a briar and a rose. There's a tree in the forest, I don't know where. I made a nest out of your hair, and climbing high into the air, a briar. do not know how long it's been since I was born in Brennan's Glen. But at the end of spring there grows a briar and a rose. I picked the rose one early morn I prick my finger on the thorn They'd grown so close their winding wall A briar around the road I try to tear them both apart I felt a bullet in my heart And dressed in spring's brand new clothes A briar and a rose and when I'm buried and in my grave, tell me so I may know your tears will fall and make love grow. The briar and and when I'm buried
buried and in my grave tell me so i may know your tears will and make love grow a briar and a rose once upon a time a girl sat by her open window sewing it was midwinter and the snow lay heavy on the ground but the day was bright and the snow sparkled and she stared out longing to be away she stopped concentrating on her sewing and ow, pricked her finger so that drops of her red blood fell onto the snow on the windowsill and she stared at the red and the white as she did so, she heard a singing, a strange singing. She couldn't see where the song came from. Red and white and gold, the prince shall sleep till time is old. She looked up. And there was a little golden bird, and the bird fluttered down to the windowsill. Sing again, said the girl. I find I can understand your words. And the bird sang again. White and gold and red, the prince sleeps in his bed. Sing more. Gold and red and white he will wake on midsummer's night tell me more said the girl to the little bird and the little bird said far 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 from here and farther still is the castle of the sleeping prince he sleeps under a spell under enchantment but wakes once a year at midsummer if only there was someone there by his side when he woke, then the spell would be broken and he would be freed. Where is the castle of the sleeping prince? asked the girl eagerly. I do not know, said the bird. I only know that to reach it, you must wear out a pair of iron shoes. A pair of iron shoes. The little bird flew, but the girl sat and dreamt. She dreamt of the castle of the sleeping prince and she dreamt of how she would rescue him. She had a pair of iron shoes made in secret and then one night when all were fast asleep she crept away from home, put on the iron shoes and began to walk and she walked far and far and further still till she came to a forest a great wild forest but she did not turn back she walked on and she came one evening to a little house with snowdrops around the door and she knocked an old woman answered i'm looking for the castle of the sleeping prince do you know where it is i do not and this is no place for a girl like you. You must go back home. I cannot. I must go on. I have to go on. Well, said the old lady, if you must, you must. Come in. I'll give you something to eat and something to drink. But when my son comes home, you must hide. For he would not like to see a girl like you. So the girl went in and she had a bowl of soup and some bread to eat and a cup of tea with the old lady and after they'd eaten there was a sighing in the world outside and a rustling <sighs> quick said the old lady hide she crept into a corner cupboard and hid and in through the door whew, came the west wind himself and the west wind said mother 
I smell mortal flesh. Do not worry, son, said the old lady. It's only a girl in iron shoes. She was looking at the, for the castle of the sleeping prince, which I have never heard of. Have you? I have not, said the west wind. But maybe my cousin, the east wind, might have done. When the west wind was fast asleep, the girl crept out from a hiding place, closed the door softly behind her, and walked on. And she walked on far and far and further still. She walked on in her iron shoes. And she walked through rain and she walked through sun. And her clothes faded and grew ragged. And she came one evening to a little house and she knocked on the door. And all around the door were bluebells. An old woman answered it. I'm looking for the castle of the sleeping prince. Do you know where it is? I do not. And this is no place for a girl like you. You must go home. I cannot. I must go on. I must. Well, if you must, you must. Come in. I'll give you something to eat and something to drink. And when my son comes home, you must hide, for he will not like to see a girl like you. The girl went in. A bowl of soup and some bread and some tea. But after they'd eaten, there was a rattling of the windows and doors and a shrieking in the world outside. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Quick, hide, said the old woman. And there was a corner covered and she hid inside. And in through the door came the east wind. Whoo, mother, I smell mortal flesh. Don't worry about it, son. It was just a girl, a poor girl in iron shoes. She was looking for the castle of the sleeping prince, which I have never heard of. Have you? I have not, said the east wind. Maybe my cousin, the north wind, knows something of it. The girl waited until the east wind was fast asleep. And then she crept out, closed the door behind her and walked on. She walked far and far and farther still, and the rain rained and the sun wet her. And she came at last to a little house, and there were roses growing around the door. Red roses and white roses. And she knocked, and an old woman answered it. I'm looking for the castle of the sleeping prince. You don't know where it is, do you? I do not. And this is no place for a girl like you. You must go home. I cannot. I must go on, I must. Well, if you must, you must. Come in, I've got something to eat and something to drink, but when my son comes home, you better hide. He will not like to see a girl like you. Well, there was soup and there was bread and a cup of tea. And when they'd eaten and when they'd drunk and when they talked a little while, there was a whole shaking of the house and hail hammering down on the roof and the wind howling, quick hide. There was a corner cupboard and she quickly ran inside and then the door was blown open by the north wind himself Ho! said the north wind mother i smell mortal flesh don't worry said the old woman only a poor girl in iron shoes she's gone now she was looking for the castle of the sleeping prince i've never heard of it have you i have have. And where is it? The path that leads from our door leads to the castle of the sleeping prince. Good, said the old woman. I think that's the way she went. Ha! Much good will it do her. The castle of the sleeping prince is guarded by two fierce lions. They will devour and tear to pieces any intruder there. Mm. Is there no way past such fierce lions? Asked the old woman. There is, there is, said the north wind. The roses that grow by our door. The roses, the red and white roses. But when the north wind was fast asleep, the girl crept out from her hiding place and she picked a rose, a white rose. And the thorns pricked her fingers till they bled. And she picked a red rose. And she walked on in her iron shoes, far, far and farther still, following the path. 
until one day she felt the earth beneath her feet and the iron shoes were worn away. She looked down and when she looked up there was a castle and guarding the gates of the castle two fierce lions. Holding the roses in her hand she walked on and as she did she sang. Red and white and gold The prince shall sleep till time is old Red and gold and white He wakes on midsummer's night Gold and white and red the prince sleeps in his bed. She laid the roses before the lions, and they lay down and purred like kittens. <laughs> and the gates of the castle opened, and the girl walked in, and everything and every one lay fast asleep. The horses in the stable slept, the groom slept too. The pigeons on the roof slept, the flies on the wall slept too. Through kitchen, the kitchen cook slept. Through the rooms, the many rooms of the castle, the servants and the courtiers slept. And in the throne room, the king and queen slumbered on their golden thrones. She found a stair that led up higher and higher until she came to a room and there on a bed sleeping the prince. She sat down beside him and waited. But she didn't have long to wait for she had walked into midsummer night. And the prince opened his eyes and saw her there and gazed at her and said you have broken the spell and then everything and everyone woke up and the castle was full of noise for oh, the horses woke and the grooms woke and the pigeons woke and flew and the flies started buzzing and the kitchen chef started cooking and the servants started running the courtiers started courting and the king and the queen stretched and yawned and found their way to the bedroom and when they found the girl and the prince, they found them deep in conversation. How can we ever thank you for breaking the spell, they said. How can we reward you? And the girl looked at the prince and the prince looked at the girl. And they found they had grown to love one another in that conversation. The prince. Well, a wedding was arranged and a, cast, a carriage sent for the girl's mother and father and they rode, rode so quickly through that forest to join them and it was a great feast and everyone celebrated the lifting of the spell and the joyful marriage of the girl who'd followed her dream and the prince and the singer at the wedding was the golden bird and the golden bird sang for joy And those are my songs and those are my stories for Midsummer. Love to you all. Stay safe and stay well. Young and old, you've been listening to a wonderful story. And if you really liked it, if you've got a little money, it doesn't have to be a lot, a little goes a long, long way, as they say. And uh, you can afford it. Just pop it into the storyteller's hat, because uh, 
Right now they're not earning at all, so whatever you've got, it will be appreciated. And I'm sure you parents want to set a good example for your children. Oh, it's lovely. I'm only joking. But it will keep some of us going through this crisis. And those of you that are self-employed out there will know exactly what I mean and you're probably exempt. 